Hey everyone, it's uh, Joe and Isaiah here from The Automator, and today we have a very special video in the sense of it's Auto Hockey's birthday. So 19 years Definitely. ago today, November 10th, Chris Mallett had distributed the very first version of Auto Hockey. Um, I forget the version number. I have it in the, the newsletter that I sent out earlier today, but um, it's kind of relevant. But it was just really, really cool. I saw this coming up, and I'm like, 19 years, like this is amazing um, yeah. I was actually thinking, Isaiah's like, I wonder if Lexicos will think maybe holding off on V2 being official until next year. And that way, after 20, it's like years, a 20 years, yeah. <laughs> yeah, every 10 years, we get a new version. No, I um, still I still think that it's going to take a little time. I don't think it's going to be released on this year uh, by the looks of it. But yeah, you know, we never know. <laughs> you know that I have been doing auto hockey for about, you know, 10 years, a little bit more, right? Yeah. Right. Um, and and just to think, just thinking about it, well, when I actually started with Auto Hotkey, it was already a five, 10 year project. So it was already right. in a very stable situation, right. right? But it was so different back then than now. Actually, I, I, I remember that you yeah. had been also coding for a long time. How was it for you at that time? Like, <laughs> oh, well, so that's what we, we were just chatting about was before we started recording. But um, it was so interesting because when I was learning auto hotkey, when I first started learning it, I would try to search and find, you could find, basically it was the forum, maybe um, Reddit was around. I don't remember if I ever went to Reddit back then. I don't think so. I didn't, but, I didn't even know that there was a Reddit. Uh, yeah, fair uh, enough. Right. Reddit. Neither did I. Yeah, I don't right. remember knowing that. Um, But what was really, really, to me, really cool was I found your videos on YouTube, right? Yeah. But, but you were the only one doing videos on auto hotkey that I remember. And you had to even YouTube. This is how long ago it was. YouTube limited how long your videos could be. So you had, to, no, you had to 10 or 15, 15 minutes. I think, was, if I yeah, remember, I think it was 15. 15. Yeah. And I was always making 10 minute videos just to make sure that I, yeah, it's oh. true. Which, so, which um, was okay, depending because of the topic. I didn't want to spend 20 minutes just talking about the one thing. So right. you could actually you know, have it in chunks, right? As we were saying earlier, there's always pros and cons to like anything, right? Yeah. And by YouTube limiting how much time you could do, it probably forced you to be more precise, right? Yes. To do a better job of like condensing. It allowed me to understand better whatever I was going to... Because actually, I started the videos just to learn. Because one of the things is that I learn faster when I'm explaining something. A lot of times I have yeah. no clue about one topic... And I just read a little bit and try to explain it. And as I'm doing it, I get it. Oh, so this is what well, they're doing. Right. And your brain actually, because my, my friend that works in cognitive psychology, right? I've talked about this. Your brain works differently when you're explaining stuff to how stuff works to people. And so right. that's part of it. It gets cemented in and it gets structured better in your brain when you start explaining it to other people. And then you end up having a better understanding. So everyone out here, start doing videos. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but in the end, what, what I was doing, I started making the videos. I was trying to explain myself and, and that actually helped me step up a little bit. But the, the, I don't know how many people were doing that at the time. But um, after... Uh, when I go back and watch those videos, I was like, what was I doing? <laughs> yeah, right. Which is, that's a great segue into the next thing. Uh -huh. But actually, before I do this, this discount code over my head. So we created a discount code for the Auto Hockey's 19th birthday. It applies to anything and everything we offer. So if you're interested in any sort of Auto Hockey course or consultations or tutoring, um, and that's also kind of, we were talking about at the time, you had the forum, but you couldn't just ask someone. Like, no one knew anybody that knew Auto Hotkey, right? Like, it just right, wasn't yeah. a thing. That's true. Now, with our hero, and you can see it over my shoulder here, on that URL, if you join, this is our group where, if you're a member, you can af access us on Telegram, and you can ask, you know, Isaiah Sai or the rest of the group, right? We all chime in and help each other. Uh, Thomas just posted an excellent article I was reading, and I'm like, this it's really cool that we learn from each other, right? Yes. So we got our own little community, and this discount code over my head here, this will give you 19% off on anything and everything we offer. So let's get awesome. that out of the way. Now... What I was going to say was talking about the whole, what in the world was I thinking? Let me, yeah. let me share my screen here. First, let me share the overall, what I've been doing forever is, you know, there's your main auto hot e file, right? right. Which you may or may not use, right? There's no special thing about it, but I've been backing it up since this, this file initially, I added it the other day. But it was uh, 2008, if I remember correctly, the timestamp of when it was last modified. I don't remember when it was created. But um, I went through it and 
Um, but anyway, this is what I do just to, in case I want to later revert at some point back to something I had done years ago. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. I still have it. I hate deleting stuff and rewriting. So okay. I can just search. But what I did was I went through and cleaned up because I had some passwords that I just try not to laugh. I still use. So I, I edited them. I edited that and just edited it. and some people's email addresses and names, right? I've edited those out. But overall, this is my script that I created around 2008. I thought we would scroll through it to get an idea of one, how horrible of a programmer I was. And when I say that, it, the thing was they worked, right? right. Like yeah, so, 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 here it's, not, it's not it's not about being like the correct solution. Right. It works. It's just about that now you learned better ways of doing it and now you learned about certain situations that might happen when you do this. So there's a lot yeah. of, you know, <laughs> old yeah. down W alt up, dude, just an, an old side would have sufficed four tabs. Well, well, it's in Excel though. Why wouldn't I be using calm? Right. Like, well, that, that's another, that's an, yeah. but here's the other thing. You see this down several times. Yeah. And maybe by the time that you did this, they didn't have the down five because now right. you can put in the brackets, yeah, you can sure. put a number and it would yeah, just put, put it here. Right. Right, so you can put like six, whatever the number is. Right, right, and and, and that way you don't have to repeat yourself so many right. times. But that was not right. always there. I don't know how yeah. long ago that was yeah. when they inserted that, but it was something that I'm not really sure if it was at that time. It might be that when you were doing it, you didn't have right. any other option. But Look, yeah, this is amazing. I, I had my. This is really interesting. I had both my edit and reload stuff way even way back then. Wow. Right, like yeah. I've had those things forever. And oh, there we go. So we have two clips. Yeah. F <laughs> then left. Yeah. yeah. That was a good one. This what is one that? a return? What why did you send a, a return like that? Not a new line? Oh, that's interesting. 49, line 49. Yeah, I don't know. Who Whoa. knows? Right. It's been so long. So like how, did that even work? Like I don't understand how yeah, that, 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 that that well, Windows would understand it, right? Um, because Windows understand carriage yeah. returns and new lines. But yeah, um, in other programs, it would fail right away. This one is one, it's kind of hard to explain by, but I used to work in market research and I created 8 billion graphs, right? I was always creating graphs in Excel. And the problem is I'd always want to take up the entire space, but often Excel would truncate where, you know, how far it was going to, right? Yep. So this would allow me, I could click the, the X axis and just hit a hotkey and it would increment how far that ending point, right? And it was so simple and so fast. I used this so many times. And again, I'm sending damn keystrokes, right? Right. Yeah. Actually, I use some logic to say, hey, if it's if it's above 61, um, do it at a different step level, if I remember right. It's been so long yeah. since I've done this. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, here's another crazy one similar. Um, All right. That is very interesting, actually, looking at what you had to do to make it work. Um, at that particular level, later on, you say, hey, why don't oh, I God. use com objects, right? right? right. Now, yeah. now well, you know how complex com objects more, are, yeah. right? More, more to the point also, though, if we really look at this, I basically have like the same thing several times, right? And that's where like, I didn't I didn't oh, use right. functions back then, right? Right. I okay. definitely put this in a function and fed in some parameters instead of having the same thing multiple times. But here's the thing. It worked. That's right. That's what I said. Right. It's <laughs> right. and here's the thing. Back then, I had no clue what I was doing. You know what I mean? Like it. It was one of those things. I'm like, whatever. I'm going to try this. And and like you said, it worked. Right. Like this simple one, Outlook. It used to be Control Shift M to do. I think to create a new email. Uh -huh. and it drove me nuts because I could never remember Control Shift M. So I did Control M to do Control Shift M. And it would only happen if Outlook was open, right? And I'm like, oh, this wow. is it's yeah, stupid, but I was like, yeah. really helpful. Um, right, definitely. Was, this is my original, like, oh, oh, getting the path to explore. Oh, uh, wow. Mentor. This was my wife's logging into her company's uh, webmail, simplifying that. Loading survey gizmo, loading a website. Uh, this was I changed oh, the yeah, I was, yeah okay yeah, this I was, was gonna this was a fun yeah <laughs> but um and again it's stupid but it was like you know it it worked well it was lugging yeah. you in right so right. And, and this is the interesting thing uh most of the commands that you see here haven't haven't changed right since that time so right you could probably even run this and it would still do most of what you think it's gonna do right right I, I really doubt that any of this has changed. 
Now, that's the good thing about having a, oh, look at that, converting the clipper to uppercase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I got it. But why was the lower not? I, I why didn't have the lower? Yeah. Because now I have upper, lower, and title case, you know, because right. I use them. I I don't use them as often as I used to, but yeah, they were very handy. This one right. would. I don't know why I took this approach. I must have got it from somewhere online, but it, it, it gives your IP address, but I know there's a, you know, a much better way to do that now. This one was really interesting. It would strip out from Survey Gizmo. Like I said, I worked in survey research, and it would append all this crap to your data and th right. this stupid, you know, really bad regex, you know, approach. But it worked. It cleaned up my text for me. In a, you know, I'd hit a hotkey. I'd select it all, hit a hotkey, and it would remove all the junk. And I'm like, that saved me hours and hours of time. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, this one I still love. So this one I can select text and then it will it will wrap with the um, the right align HTML around what I select. Oh, so nice. cause, cause in survey research, I would often list text, but I'd want the text close to the thing. Instead of left aligned, I want it right aligned. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Uh, and I could use HTML. And so I would just right. highlight it, hit a button, and it would grab it and wrap each line individually with the right align. And then it would look much better in the survey. Right. I'm um, here, and I still use a lot of these. Maybe they're a little different now to do HTML oh, stuff. Right. Yeah. Right? So we, we were making a joke earlier, and I don't know how we would test it, but we should see, have a contest of like who can, because anybody can have tens of thousands of hot drinks, but it's remembering them, right? And actually using <laughs> yeah, that's, it. That, that's the actually, that's yeah. the actual issue. And and I have a list in there and, and most, I have a short list. I don't, I don't use them that often, but I just forget about them. Like, uh -huh. I always that and, and and basically my auto hotkey toolkit has a search bar exactly for that because I always uh, forget right. about them and I had this little search going on. And actually, I can show you something about you know because uh, as as you were you know um, at that time coding, yeah. I will show you something when you finish here. Yeah, let me let me just scroll. I think a lot there's a lot of hot strings, a lot of just this is because I wrote syntax and SPSS, but it was always annoying to have to go find my little templates, right? So mm -hmm. I used AutoHotKey to pull up my code for SPSS. So I had a lot of those. This one would actually create the, the whole macro wherever I was. So it's something I used a lot. So, uh, yeah, I have I have exactly that. I have a, a, a hot string that gives me the current date or you oh. know calculates a little bit <laughs> yeah. the date or the current time. Yeah. Doing some Google searching on what what is selected, uh, which is I guess I don't know why that's commented out, but um, uh, this is and this was weird to me. I brought in the, you know, the autocorrect stuff from uh, uh -huh. uh, there's the, for the spell check. This is uh -huh. that Windows H thing. I brought it in to my main script. Oh wow! Uh, so, so so you you didn't know about including files at that time, maybe? Well, true. I don't think I did, but all, no, I I did well. I referred to one here earlier, but yeah, I didn't use an include. I don't remember. Um, but my point is, there's no way this should be part of my main script. Right. This was I, an additional yeah. script that did. Yeah, it should have right. definitely been separate. So I don't know what I was thinking. This one, let's see if actually let me let me see if I can can you go up a little bit? Sorry. Yeah. There, 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 there. Hot string R. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this just so you get an idea of what I was doing with survey research, because it would happen a lot where I'd be creating a survey. I think I launched this thing, GI period space. Yeah, so this now in my survey tool, I can paste this and I have the exact survey, you know, with not line break important, line break one, and then these are all two, three, four, five, six, and then the sevens are, but, but it it made it so easy to ha not have to worry about, hey, did I did I do a typo? Did, yeah, did, did you write it correctly yeah, or not? Right, Notice right. that you were sending return carriages there, carriage returns, but the editor where you were was actually displaying them correctly anyway. Right, yeah, I didn't even... Interesting, yeah. right, yeah. And I think that's it, yeah. Then I had just some a couple of little things. Send right. custom, what? What in the world was that? Control-Shift-I. Oh, was actually it? Send, you know, you would just send that to whatever you were. So that, that's kind of like a path. Oh, you know that's how hilarious. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I have... totally changed my approach on it. Because now right, right. my other one, I can say p.icons. And there right, exactly. It's, it's a, yeah. Now it's a hot string that actually gives yeah. you this. While before it seems to be that you had a hot key for it. So, and this, this tells you about how your mentality changed. Because right. you said, and you mentioned this, 
your mind doesn't see typing a little string and launching a program. Right. But right. now pushing a hotkey and typing something is also something that doesn't make sense. No, you right. Push a, you push a hotkey right. to open or create an right. action and then type yeah. a little oh. bit to actually have yeah. something else. Yeah, so that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, I would say it, for me, the the reverse, the one you just said, like the using a hotkey to sending text, it it does, that works in my brain, a sense of me actually with thinking about it. But it's really of like, hey, do I, like, because I use it for passwords in username login, right? Like, well, I don't know, but that, that, that is actually kind of like two things for an action to log in, right? Yeah. Oh, I know, I'm just saying, I'm saying my point is my thought process is, is how my brain has used it, right? Is things that I do so often, I want a hot key instead of a hot string. All right. right. So okay. I can have one key, I can hit it, and it does whatever. Yeah, whether right, it's, exactly. Yeah. But anyway, so what were you going to share? Um, I was just going to say, like, the changes in AutoHotKey from the past 10 years, basically. Uh, not many people have uh, noticed the changes, but one that has oh, always been a little bit funny to me is the fact that you see these two AutoHotKey scripts, one after the other and one belonging to the other. This is my main file, and you can see it in the pop-up there that says AHK Toolkit in the path, the last part of the path. And the second one is what is called the hslauncher.code. So my main script, which is the AutoHotKey Toolkit, launched a separate script that had all my hot strings. The reason for that is that before, we didn't have this hotkey command or the hot string right. command right. that allowed me to change something dynamically. So right. I had to create a file, had all the hot strings in it. If I made a change, like for example, if I added a new hot string or I would append to that file and relaunch the script, you right. know? So I had to have it in a different file so I didn't have to relaunch my main script, which was funny. And, and, and this is just remains of things that we had in the past that we had to actually figure it out. There was no way of us doing it. So we had to come up with a clever way of doing that, you know? Yeah, yeah I'd say for me, because I used auto hotkey for quite a while as hotkeys and hot strings for the most part, right? And then I changed job. I actually left TI and then I came back. When I came back, I had a whole different, I didn't work in market research anymore. And my job was to automate a process of doing a lot of SQL work, which used to burn through people. And so I had to learn web scraping. I had to learn SQL and calm. And I was trying to read the forum and understand how to do web scraping. And then I noticed this calm thing, but every time I would do search in the forum for like web scraping, there would be clearly two different like syntaxes that I'm like, what in the world is this? One is so hard to read. The other one's so easy. And I didn't know it at the time, but it was the vanilla version of auto of, and I think Tank actually had a library, you know, a thing for using it. Um, mm -hmm. that didn't have Tom integrated with it. And then Lexicos launched the auto hotkey L, which had Tom which is, into it. It is exactly why it launched. Yeah. It, which actually, you know, I don't know if we've ever put this together, but you know, in our objects course, we talk about that of the object oriented programming and how objects make things so much easier. You want a clear, you know, example of that. Go try reading the older posts on how to use web scraping with IE before COM was integrated. It's so much harder and convoluted. And then the new version, it's just, I was like, this just makes so much more sense to me. Um, and it right. took me quite a while to understand the differences, um, but right. you know, as far as the V1 versus uh, vanilla, but right. yeah, it was um, it was such a huge step forward. Um, thank you, Lexicos, right. for, you know, Doing that because it's made an enormous difference. <laughs> totally. So in general, we are moving toward version two at some point. Hopefully, as you mentioned, it's on the 20th birthday. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, cool. yeah. Oh. yeah let's let's make it on the 20th birthday. But we will see how it goes. And yeah, uh, thank thank you for actually also creating your videos. You have like thousands of videos on well, the hotkey. Last man. I counted, like yeah, I think getting close to 1,300 now. Yeah. Wow. It's funny is. It was from talking to Jackie because I didn't have a you know a YouTube channel and Jackie and I started talking and then I said you know I'm gonna I'm gonna start documenting just stuff and I would really start it with SPSS in Office and then I started making a couple auto hotkey things and then I just kept it going and then I decided to quit TI because be, I mean I had two different bosses that said don't automate stuff and I'm like 
you know what, whatever. Um, you guys are nuts. <laughs> like to the automator. <laughs> They're yeah, telling right, the automator yeah, not right. to automate stuff. Right. And you're like, oh, come yeah. on. Yeah. And uh, it was just funny that like it just took off. And the, the other thing was I hated being on camera, right? Like I, it just, I really didn't like it. And then now obviously I'm pretty numb to it, but it's been yeah. a, it's been a long road. And I know my early videos were horrible. But some of them were horrible. Some of them were to the point, some of the quality, just because I didn't have a good mic and good, I had a hum and some of my computers, you know, were really annoying. But yeah, it, it's, I've come a long ways. And now we're making, I think, really good videos with usually good intros and get you hooked and explaining it concisely and not just kind of rambling. Um, what I actually was going to ask you was, if you could first like the video, it does help us out. It gets more people to see it. But also, actually, I'd love for you to look back at your original code when you started using AutoHotKey. Comment in below when you started using AutoHotKey and comment in something about like your first usage. Right. If you remember what it was. Like, yeah, that's, that's oh, real quickly, cool. you and I talked about this a little. How did you find AutoHotKey, right? Like I found it because I was sick and tired of using auto control in Office mm -hmm. to autocorrect, excuse me, where I would put in like, you know, the thing I showed you with the, the agree, disagree scale in typing, yes. you know, or just writing um, more likely than like I would put those kind of phrases into Word or into Excel. And the problem was they didn't sync their files. So you had to do it in every program that you want to do it. And right. I don't think Outlook even had it at the time, No, exactly. but it was, it was really annoying. And I found RoboType, which is this other PC mag tool. And then very shortly after that, I found AutoHotKey. And that was where, because I didn't know it, I was trying to do hot strings. Right. Okay. Okay. But that was so where that, it was like, that, yeah. On my point, it was uh, the opposite. Actually, I found it when I was really young. Um, at that time, the only thing is that I had um, many programs. I tested a lot of programs. So I wanted to launch them very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why can't I just press two keys and launch a program? Like that, 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 that would be kind of like intuitive. Like why yeah. doesn't Windows allow me to do that? So sorry if I interrupt you, but it just, you just reminded me in 1997, um, mm -hmm. my undergraduate, I remember my friend, Dan Joseph. Hey, Dan, if you're watching, um, he, he and I, we were talking about something and I showed him how you can create you can add hotkeys to launch programs if your program, I think at the time it had to be on your desktop, if I remember right. But kind you could of. you could you could add the shortcut keys to say, hey, when I hit control alt in, launch Netscape, because I think that's that's what our browser but you needed. Was yeah, but you needed a shortcut for that. And it had to be right. at the beginning, I think. On the desktop, at least. That's what, yeah, yeah it was I a certain was. spot. I forget. I think it was the desktop, but yeah, it was really particular. But he was over the moon when I showed it, was, it to yeah, him. It was like that. You know? But then yeah, later on, yeah, uh, exactly. And, and the, the point was that then, uh, then I was like, why do I have to keep all these shortcuts that I'm not going to use, right? Just for a hotkey. So, and you couldn't put any hot any hotkey you wanted. Like, for example, the window right. key, you, can, sure. you could not right. use it, right? Yeah. Those kind of right. things. But then, um, that searching and searching, uh, I put hotkey, you know, here comes auto hotkey. And I just found auto hotkey right in the middle of the flame wars. For those who are not that old, there were some flame wars between auto hotkey and auto it. So no. auto hotkey comes from auto it. It actually, right. even in the documentation specifies sure. that it comes from auto it. And the people from AutoEd, they didn't like it for whatever reason. They were coming to the forums to argue about it, how AutoEd is better and whatever it was. So I was in the middle of it I, when I when I found AutoHotKey. The first thing I had to do, like when I started, no, right. because AutoEd right. wasn't. And I was, I, okay, let me test. Let me see oh. what it is all about. I checked AutoEd. I checked AutoHotKey. The syntax was a little bit different in the sense sure. of one was more commandy, like, like basic it looked like the ba visual basic more like right. yeah it's more of a programmer's kind of tool right and and auto hotkey was a little bit more to the point especially for what i was trying to do because if i was trying to do something else probably i would have gone with auto it was the variables all the variables had to have this dollar sign and i was like yeah no <laughs> uh, you couldn't put the name whatever you wanted it had to have a dollar sign in it and i was like no way I, I, that doesn't make sense to me let me continue with auto hotkey and in the end, uh, and this is the thing, out of hotkeys at 12 point, I wanted a hotkey. Well, auto it was not easy for making hotkeys. So, so that was what I said, like, nah, it's okay. I'm just going to go without a hotkey. And yeah. since then, I have been doing that. Eh? Well, yeah, and eight years ago-ish, I was playing around with Python because my boss at TI said, you know, 
can you do this in Python? Because if you get hit by a bus, no one knows auto hotkey. And so I'm like, well, let me let me try. And I could do it in Python, but boy, it wasn't e the stuff I was doing on a hotkey. There, it's, I use auto hotkey for a reason, right? It's hooks really well into Windows. It makes it very easy to do desktop automation, right? Yeah. Python is, is an amazing tool. Don't get me wrong. It's also great for server analytics. Automation. Analytics yeah, and, and, and stuff yeah, like huge that. Yeah. Of stuff. Yeah. yeah. But connecting to running programs, you know, or sending it, like you said, watching for a, a hotkey, like tell me a Python script where you're like, wait until I hit this. It, you know, it's always you're launching it. Yeah. But it's not acting off of your interactions, right? Like it's right. just that way. How about, how about GUIs? Have you tried oh, GUIs in Python? No, I have, yeah. <laughs> I told you, I used to go to the Python meetups in Dallas and there was every event, there'd be at least 50 developers there, right? It was a really yeah. large group and very knowledgeable. And I'd be talking to them and I'm like, yeah, I'm doing this. And I'm trying to create a GUI. They're like, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't mess with GUIs. I'm like, yeah, they're, you know, and I'm like, so just before I tried doing them with Auto Hotkey, and I'm like, man, this is really complicated. Auto Hotkey is a great language, but their GUIs, man, it's really hard. Yeah. And so I was like, I was trying to do them in Python, and that was when I realized, you know what, GUIs are just a whole different animal. They're they're they much are. more complicated. Once you understand, you have to be aware at any point in time, someone's going to take an action on some part of your thing, and you know it's not a linear process, right? Like at right. least. For me, that's a big part of like, I had to grasp that of like at any certain time, anything can happen and you need to have a way to, you know. I think I think that's the reason why I'm so um, so strict with file placement because as the script, whenever I create a, a GUI, each part of the GUI has its own file and I okay. have it in different locations because the script itself, if it's just one block, it's going to be jumping around from one. Yeah, is, right. I get it. But if it is yeah. actually modularized, then I right. know where to right. look for it right. because I know that anything that is going to do right. with that is going to happen in this you know, file. You know? And I think to, to pile on top of that, humans, when we see a long file, we want to think linearly, right? You know what I mean? This happened, then this, then this. But by what you're doing, breaking them into separate files, it helps not make those assumptions, right? Right. Like, oh, I, I can easily understand each of these right. things can now, happen at any point. And it just so, happened now when you mentioned that now it clicked on, to me. Like, that's the reason why I make these file uh, structures. Yeah. It's just because I'm not usually working with linear Right. Programs. I'm working with right. things that do things in different orders. So it's not about the order, it's about where they are. So it's in that file. That's where I'm going to find it. So, yeah. But actually, great uh, <laughs> little kind of like review from the beginning of Auto Hotkey to now, like 19 years of yeah. developing <laughs> should make a lot of changes. But I hope that not only us are the ones that are have been improving. Yeah. Hopefully, our viewers kind of can can comment. You know, at the beginning I was doing this thing, and now I'm doing this yeah, other I'd thing. Love to hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's <laughs> awesome. And again, I, you know, I was making fun of myself, but but it's where I was at that point in time, right? Like it, it's it it worked, and it worked. You know? Yeah, I'm like fine. Anyway. So thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching. And thanks for subscribing if you're a subscriber. That's what I was going to say. Like, it doesn't matter how it was. It works. Right. Right. Bye. Bye.